Hi, my name is Kellen O'Connor. I'm an engineer from Team 6691, the Borderline Obsessed Technicians. We're from Valley High School in West Des Moines, Iowa. I'm going to be making a series of tutorials to assist beginner teams that are completely new to programming, FTC, and robotics in general. In this specific video, I'm going to go over how to create a program to let you drive around the robot with the joysticks, as well as other basics about Robot C, programming, and a couple other little tips. If, after watching the video, you still have questions, please contact me or any member of my team through the email address that I will be posting in the description of the video. However, I'd prefer if you use the comment section because any questions that you might have, it's pretty likely that another team has the same questions, and if you were to ask it in a comment, then everybody can see the answer as well. Anyways, on this tutorial. So first thing you need to do is open up Robot C. Here's Robot C. This is just the uh, basic start page. Um, I don't have much information about LabVIEW, so I'm only going to be using Robot C. Anyways, we'll be working with a pre-made template for TeleUp that is provided with Robot C. So go to Open Sample Program. You should already be in the place that says NXT. Scroll to First Tech Challenge. Then scroll down to teleop.c. Okay, so in this video, I am assuming that you already have a robot that's correctly wired with one motor controller and two motors, and each motor drives its own wheel left and right. Um, before we get to any of the programming itself, we have to go through some basic setup stuff. So, um, first things first, click on Robot. This is already done for me, it might not be done for you. Uh, robot, Platform Type, LEGO Mindstorms, LEGO Mindstorms, NXT plus Tetrix. That is really important. So go ahead and click that. Um, oh, also, if you don't have a robot wired up, I'll make a separate video for that later. Anyways, next we need to go to Robot, Motors and Sensor Setup, then go to Tetrix Controllers, and select Custom. Now, Standard would work for this, but you need to get used to using Custom because that's what you'll be using for everything eventually. So, first device, High Tech, high -tech Motor, just like it says, yes. Second device, None. So. With that done, go over to Motors, and this is where we need to rename the motors. Motor A, B, and C here, those are all the NXT motor spots, like directly plugged into the NXT. We're going to ignore those for now, focusing on the last two here. We need to rename these Drive L and Drive R, and also make sure that the motor is equipped. Chances are you're going to need to reverse one of them, but I'm ignoring that for now because I'm just doing a program tutorial. You'll know if you need to reverse them later as you try to run it. So, oh, also, it's really important they actually do rename the motors because after you start to get maybe six to eight robot or motors on your robot, it's going to be a big pain in the butt if you're trying to figure out which motor is which. You're going to be trying to move an arm around and it moves your left wheel and that's a good way to break motors if you aren't careful. Anyways, click apply and close. So this is where you're going to be doing all of your programming in Robot C. This is where it says errors. This is a good thing to have open. Don't close it. Um, if it's not there, it'd be under, let's see, debugger windows. Um, no, maybe not. Never mind. I'll get to that later. Not a big deal right now. So all the green text is comments. This is something that lets you lets you and other people read the program to see what you need to go back and edit later. It really helps it so that you can um, figure out what you're doing. The include joystick driver C that's important. Never delete that. And here's the thing that says void initialize robot. This if you have servos on your robot later. Um, it'll position them in the beginning. Right now, 
we don't need it, so I'm going to get rid of it. Keep scrolling down, and you get to a place that says Task Main. Task Main is what your robot, what the program does. Um, task Main, you always have to have it, it's important. Never delete it. If you don't, your robot's just not going to work. So we just deleted the function initialize robot, so I can delete that too. Um, wait for start, that's always important. You aren't going to be able to pass field inspection if you don't have this because this prevents your robot from running, running when it's not supposed to. Now, down here, we have a while true loop. If you're not familiar with programming, a while loop repeats itself over and over as long as the condition inside the parentheses is true. Now, in robot C, the condition true literally means true, but it could also be something like 6 equals 6. Or if you have a variable, while well, that equals a value. That works too. Uh, conversely, if it says false or 5 equals 6, for example, it's not going to run. Anyways, I'm going to get rid of all the comments here because we don't need them. They're just clutter right now. Not a big deal. So, also another thing to note, these little brackets, they're important. Everything that lines up, for example, between these two brackets applies to the while loop, while everything inside these two brackets applies to task main. So, as you're going through things, it's common, say, if I was to delete this, that bracket, it's not going to work. Uh, yes, I do want to save. Anyways, I need to uh, save that really quick. Okay. So anyways. Hmm. That's because I don't have an NXT brick right now. So I'm just going to compile the program, which should tell me if I have errors or not. Ah. I put their parentheses or bracket back in, so I didn't have an error. See, it expects the bracket, it doesn't find one, it has an error, and your program is not going to run. Anyways, inside the while loop, we are going to put all the different functions that we want our robot to do. So, a function is like a little piece of code that repeats itself over and over that we can copy and paste into other parts of the program. For example, the function that you have driving your robot, or lifting an arm, opening a bucket door, anything like that. So, to create a function, we actually had just deleted one earlier with the initialize robot. So, we are going to say void, then name it whatever you want, I'm going to say void drive. Okay, after typing void drive, hit enter. The drive is going to be the function that drives our robot. So inside that we need, or underneath that we need the two brackets, and everything beneath these brackets is what is going to be the drive function. So first things first, we need, well, let me go back a sec. Motors and joysticks don't really work well together. Um, a way you can blow a motor is if you're running current through the motor, but it's not enough current to actually spin the wheel. So if you were to set the motor power to, say, 2, chances are your motor is going to blow out after a while. It's not good for it. So what we need to do is create a variable that we're going to call the threshold variable. I'm going to do this inside Eh, it doesn't need to be done inside task main. I'll do it before the drive statement. So, int threshold equals uh, 20 is a good value. If you want it, it can be 15. I'm choosing 20. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. So, we're going to be driving using a style of driving called uh, tank. That means that the left joystick controls the left wheel, the right joystick controls the right wheel. That's pretty basic. Um, if you have two drivers for your robot, this is a really get, good way to keep control. Um, 
you'll find you like it the most. I promise. So, anyways, we're going to start out by saying if the absolute value, that's what ABS stands for, of joystick.joy1 underscore y2 parenthesis is greater than the threshold variable that we just made. Now, this is where brackets get important and confusing. See, you need a bracket next to the if statement too. So hit enter again. This is referencing the y-axis of the second joystick on the first controller. Who accidentally left out joy1, y2. There you go. So, first controller, y-axis of stick 2. So the right stick, meaning we're going to be talking about the right wheel. So, motor, square bracket, drive r, another square bracket, equals the value of joystick 1. And that's on a range from negative 127 to 127. So, joystick dot joy1 underscore y2. Now, this is really important. Semicolons. After every line of code that's not an if statement, while statement, or declaration of a function, you need a semicolon, or it's not going to work. So, I'm going to fill in that bracket around the motor. Then, to complete that part of it, we need an else statement so that if we're not holding the, jo the joystick, it isn't going to move the robot. So, more parentheses, motor, bracket, drive r, bracket, equals zero. So what this does, as it's going through, it's wondering, hey, is this happening? Does the value of the joystick, is it greater than 20? This basically ensures that somebody is actually pressing the joystick, they want it to move. Uh, typically the joysticks don't re reset all the way to zero, like they just mechanically they don't go there. So it's important to have the threshold to avoid burning out motors. Anyways, fill in the bracket after the else statement. Now we need to do the same thing for wheel 2. So if, ah, another important thing, copying and pasting. It's a good thing, to, good habit to get into. So I'm going to copy and paste all of that, hit enter to separate a little bit. Now, this is where stuff needs to change. If absolute value joystick joy1 y1, so this is the left joystick now, is greater than the threshold, again change that to y1, then the motor drive l equals 0. It's not too bad, is it? So, we already have the second bracket following the drive statement, and I'm going to type in a line, oops, I did not mean that, that to be there, following the bracket, saying return semicolon. This just means it's like the end of it, go back to the top, whatever. So, that declares what the function does. Now we actually need to use the function. So that is going to go inside task main in the while loop. So that runs forever. So all I'm going to do is type drive the two parentheses, that just means it's a function, semicolon. Simple as that. Now, if I hit Fn, F7, you might not need to hit F7, doesn't matter. You should see. Well, exactly. Nothing really happened. If something was to be wrong, you'd have an error message that shows up down here. So let's say I forgot my semicolon and I'm missing a bracket. Fn, F7. Oh no, I get all sorts of error messages. And they can be really confusing if you don't know what's wrong. So, like unmatched left brace in line 63. Okay, 63 was referring to the function statement. So we know we need one at the end of that. There it is. 85, task main not defined at global scope level. See, that would be confusing because it's still 
thinking that it's inside the void drive statement over here. Well, you can't have that. So this semicolon actually fixes two problems. Or, sorry, not semicolon, bracket. Um, expected semicolon before this bracket down here. Yep, that's right, so we need that. Anyways, put those things back in, it works, you're good. Now, you have a program that drives your robot, but I'd still like to go over a couple simple little things about Robot C that can give you big headaches later on. First off, Robot C is a program that loves to crash. Um, I wish I could tell you why, but it's a good program in the sense that it does what it's supposed to usually, but it likes to crash a lot. So please do yourself a favor and save often. Make different drafts of programs, um, save, save as, all sorts of stuff. You don't want to lose anything, and if you do lose something, you're not going to be very happy because you're ha going to have to spend another 10 to 15 minutes doing what you already did. We've learned that the hard way, and it's especially frustrating if you're trying to change something in uh, competition. So keep that in mind. Anyways, that concludes how to write a program that will drive your robot. It's really simple, it does what it's supposed to, and um, it should work. If it doesn't work, um, chances are your motors in the setup, they could be backwards, so what you would do is go to motors and sensor setup, um, just rename them. Like, if they're backwards, say if the right joystick moves the left wheel, rename it so that this one is drive R and this one is drive L. Or if you notice that pushing the joystick forward on the right wheel uh, moves the right wheel backwards, then you just hit reverse. It's as easy as that. So, if that was a possible issue, um, you know how to fix it. Not a big deal, nothing to freak out about. So, click apply, close, and you're good. In following videos, I'm going to be making a tutorial about um, connecting to the NXT with a Robot C through USB, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. Um, I will talk about running programs through a Robot C, which can give you a headache if you're not careful. Um, basic things to do as far as safety, and and so on. Um, again, if you have any questions or any requests for a video that you would like, let me know. Uh, I'm pretty new at making these tutorial videos, this is my first one. Um, if any of you can give me tips, I would appreciate that. Anything you want me to talk about more, talk about less, uh, get right to the point on some things or elaborate on others, please let me know. I need your help as much as you might need mine. So. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope to make more of these soon. Thank you.